Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by ComputerLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, we're going to talk about how to avoid phishing scams, how to spot and prevent email phishing attacks. So I just got back from vacation. Actually, it was the vacation from hell because I got stranded out of town for five days due to the Delta Airlines meltdown. But that's a whole different story. And when I got back, I got an email from a known client of mine, and it had a suspicious link in it, and I looked at it, and wouldn't you know, it was a phishing attack, and I get these all the time. So I figured I'd put together a public service announcement to help you avoid these. So what is phishing, spelled with a PH? Well, phishing is a type of cyber attack where some no good keyboard gremlin impersonates legitimate organizations or individuals to deceive people into providing sensitive information such as usernames, passwords, and credit card details. These attacks typically occur via email, sometimes social media, or fake websites designed to look trustworthy. And yeah, phishing comes from the word fish. It's a term from the 90s. It goes back to the freaks who used to exploit telephone systems. But again, that's a whole different video. Being aware of phishing attempts is crucial for protecting both personal and professional information. Phishing attacks are designed to exploit trust and can lead to severe consequences such as identity theft, that's happened to me, financial loss, and unauthorized access to sensitive data. Awareness also helps in maintaining the integrity of organizational security as employees are often targeted to gain access to corporate networks. Furthermore, understanding phishing can foster a culture of cybersecurity vigilance where individuals are more likely to question suspicious activities and report potential threats, thereby contributing to a safer online environment for everyone. I don't know how many times I've heard from people that were hacked, and it's usually because they clicked on a link, they gave up some information they weren't supposed to give up. The human is usually the weak link in the chain. It's not the computer system. It's someone doing something they're not supposed to do. So this just happened to me. I got back from my little vacation, and I started going through my inbox, and I found an email from a known student, and I'm not going to put the whole email up there because I want to protect this person's identity, obviously. And it looks like I received a document or fax. And I know it's the 21st century, but I do still sometimes receive legitimate faxes, especially from big companies, um, educational institutions, uh, municipalities. They want to fax a purchase order, that kind of stuff. And it did come from a legitimate email address. I looked up the email address, and yes, it's one of my students. Now, always hover your mouse over any links in an email that is, you know, you're planning on clicking on and check out the domain name where it goes to. Ignore all. There's a lots of extra letters and numbers and stuff in there. What you want to look for is the domain name. OK, now this comes from forms.office.com. So it looks like a legitimate domain name, right? And that indeed took me to forms.office.com. It looks like an actual Microsoft site because it is on Microsoft. Now, on here is another link down here that they ask you to click on. This is where the hack begins. Now, notice the domain name of the link you're supposed to click on next, r2.dev, right? You can see there's the HTTPS, all this whole thing down here. There's where the domain name is right there. And everything after the slash is just a page on that domain, right? So look for what's right before that slash. That's the only part that matters. That's where you're going. And they tried to put a sneaky little trick on the very end of it. It looks like OneDrive doc.html. So people who don't know better might think it's OneDrive. And they usually try little misspellings like an, a zero instead of an O, that kind of stuff to try to fool people. It's also on a secure server, HTTPS, right? They tell you always make sure it's a secure site. Don't ever put your financial information, your credit card number, whatever, on a non-secure site. Well... Anybody with 20 bucks can set up a secure site at an ISP. So that really doesn't mean much. It just means your data is encrypted when it's sent to the other side. All right, now, I kind of know what I'm doing. So out of curiosity, I clicked on it. You shouldn't, though. Don't click on any, any links you're not sure of. Because an HTML page by itself can't do any harm to your system. Or an ASP page, right? Just loading a web page like that won't, won't do any harm to your system. But you should, still should be very careful what you do next. Now, this took me to that URL and it presented me with what looks like a legitimate Microsoft logon page. So with any web page, you can right click on an email field and it will autofill 
your email address. If you've got autofill set up in your browser, which is fine, you can autofill your name, address, that kind of stuff. And whether it's a known or unknown page, if you're using Chrome or Edge or I don't know if Firefox does it, it probably does. I haven't used it in years. But you can right click and pick your email address. And I've got several email addresses. So I'll be okay, sure. I added my email address. Now, if you do this, the hacker will get your email address. So just be aware of that. I don't personally care. But if you want to end up on more spam lists, then you, if you submit your email address, you're going to probably get more spam. My spam blockers are pretty good, though. All right, now here's the important part. If you are using a browser-based password manager, like Google Password Manager, which I strongly recommend. I use Google Password Manager because then all of your passwords for all the different sites you're on can be stored in your Google browser, in your Google account, right? So you can log on from your phone or your browser or wherever else you happen to be logged on to your Google account. You'll have all the rest of your passwords. Now, if you right-click on a password field on a known domain, like Microsoft.com or Netflix.com or wherever, if, if the browser recognizes that's the safe domain, it will offer to fill in your password. Here it did not. I right clicked and nothing happened because the browser looked at that domain and doesn't recognize r2.dev. So it doesn't have a password saved for r2.dev. Okay. All right. Yeah, I skipped the slide. All right. Uh, it will offer to fill in the password for you if it recognizes the site. This is how it's designed. Now, at this point, don't go looking up your password and typing it in manually. That's how they get your password, okay? And of course, don't use the same password on multiple sites, especially on sites with financial data on them. I got a whole separate video on that. I'll talk about it more at the end of the video and I'll put a link down below. Use a unique separate password on every website you're on, especially sites that have your credit card number. On, uh, on my website, for example, I've got a password retrieval tool where you can go and say, send me my password. I forgot it. And it will just email it to you, to the address that's on file. And people have complained like, why are you sending my password through email? That's not safe. You know, if someone gets this, they can get it on my other sites. Well, you shouldn't be using your password on any other sites. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't use the same password on your bank and on other websites and stuff like that. A unique password on each site. I don't save sensitive information on my website. There's no credit card data on your account on the website, right? I keep it in my, my local office database, which people can't get to. Uh, but that's a whole separate video. Go watch that one there. But bottom line is don't go looking up your password and typing it in here. Otherwise, the hackers will get your password. Now, you can investigate this domain if you want to. Click on that little button right there to the left of the URL. All right, that's the site info button. And then come down to the About This Page link. And lo and behold, you will see any information on the Google machine about this specific domain name. And you can see right here, there's all kinds of reports about this particular domain. So what can you do? Well, report these jerks to your email provider. It's real easy. Most email apps have um, a report phishing option. Outlook, Gmail. Um, this will allow your email provider to improve their models to catch future emails like this one. Yeah, sure, every time you take one of these guys down, 10 more pop up, and there's always going to be new scams, but at least this helps to try to stay current and, you know, keep these guys from hurting too many people. You know, if, if you report it, you might save someone else from getting the same message. So, Also, if it's from a known contact, like the one I got was, let them know they've been hacked because somehow... Somehow, whatever this user, this student of mine did, their, their, their email address got hacked. That's how they can, you know, other people can send these malicious emails. So there used to be like macro viruses and stuff that used to attack Outlook. But uh, that's, that's been pretty much shut down. But there's still lots of ways that these hackers get in there to send malicious uh, spoofed emails. All right, so be safe out there. I got some other uh, information on my website. I got a page on password safety. I got a, pay, a page on credit card safety. And of course, I have a page on dance safety. All right, so that's going to do it for today. That's your tech help video, your little public service announcement. I'm going to go now and try to dig myself out from the 5 million pieces of email that I received while I was stuck out of town. Thank you, Delta. But that's your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. A special thank you and shout out to our diamond sponsor, Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions. 
their manufacturing experts specializing in Microsoft Access and SQL Server. Juan is a 13-time Microsoft Access MVP. Check him out at accessexperts.com. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to my channel and click the little bell icon so you get notified anytime I release a new video. And make sure you like and share this video with your friends. And make sure you stop by my website for lots of free lessons on all kinds of different topics, Microsoft Access, Excel, Word, Windows, and lots more. It's ComputerLearningZone.com, and I've also got a shorter URL. It's 599CD.com. That's a long story, but stop by anyways. We hope to see you soon.